Midday Treat with NAZ Elite, a monthly podcast in which I chat with Hoka NAZ Elite team members, and you'll get a behind-the-scenes scoop on their training, racing, and everyday lives. I'm your host, Eric Sensman. You can find our monthly podcast on SoundCloud uh, by searching Hoka NAZ Elite, and you can learn more about the faces behind the team uh, by visiting their website, nazelite.com, their Facebook page, Northern Arizona Elite, or their Instagram and Twitter, both at NAZ underscore Elite. Welcome to this episode of Midday Treat with NAZ Elite. Uh, this time I have the pleasure of welcoming Nick Hogger. Hogger, yep. yeah. I thought it was Hagger. Um, A lot of people mess it up. That's right. Whole life. <laughs> and then, uh, so yeah, we're going to get to know Nick here in, uh, in this episode who joined the team back in July of last year. We're just getting around to this uh, this podcast yeah. uh, here in January or February now. Um, but I want to start with your name because okay. once I learned how to pronounce your name, I also learned about your, your new nickname. The new nickname. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, uh, I don't know if Roy necessarily gets the credit for this one entirely, but um, he starts saying, who let the hog out once I started getting back into workouts? Get me all pumped up, lead the, t- you know, lead the rep way too quickly. Yeah. Um, and so hogs is starting to stick. Yeah. Um, I like it. But we're rolling with it. Even Ben picked it up. It's on yeah. my Instagram profile. You know, <laughs> it's here we are. It's yeah. official. Though. I'm embracing it. Yeah. You know, if they're going to be saying it, might as, might as well get everyone saying right, it. Right. Right. Yeah. You uh, you mentioned something earlier when we were talking, which is you you said you you don't pace very well up here. Right. Which uh, yeah. So you're from Spokane, which is what a couple thousand feet above sea level. Yeah. You know, it's Not a little. I think it's around two thousand. Yeah. Or so. Um, and, and then you were in Portland. Yeah. Uh, so well, sea level. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I want to get into both those things, but yeah, in terms of pacing here. How have you adapted to to the elevation here? At yeah, you know, I mean, at first, um, coming off of injury and everything, um, I just had no no sense of pace anymore. I mean, none at all. So I was just letting the guys kind of do the work, and and you know, the confidence comes, and you start to lead reps and everything. Sure. Um, but I think I just get anxious that I'll like, you know, make it too slow, and then I'm I'm on top of the pace a little too much. So that's just how it's been going so far. But yeah. I think it's more of a learning process rather than like an altitude thing. So, right. Yeah. Have you found that um, certain types of workouts uh, you're getting a better feel for than others at this point? Yeah. I mean, I was getting into a really great rhythm during the summer when I first joined up um, and I was still in Portland. Obviously, sea level thing, like is a little bit different, but I was still like in a rhythm of running where I knew my body and I knew pacing decently well, um, but it's just different up here. Um, it's completely different. So it's almost like each week is a little bit more of a learning process. Um, and I'm starting to, things are starting to click. Yeah. Things are feeling right, but yeah, it's coming. I think that's probably something that, yeah, figuring out paces and how they should feel, um, is tough for anybody who's yeah. training for a marathon. Absolutely. H- have you yeah. found anything in particular is helpful for you in terms of trying to dial in those paces a little more? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's hard because some days like feel great. And, you know, five minute pace up here, we'll, we'll just be, you know, clicking off real easy. And then some days we'll be down in Camp Verde where it should be easier and I've, it feels labored. Yeah. Um, so really I'm just like, I'm throwing out like what it should be on a day and just getting, getting in a rhythm. Yeah. You know, I usually let a few other guys lead at first and I'm like, okay, I can get, I can get into this and lead this out. Right. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. It's taking a moment. Uh, well, before we get dive more into, to right now in training and racing, yeah. um, yeah, I do want to go back a little bit for sure uh as you mentioned you're from spokane yeah. and then you ended up at portland yep. um talk to me about that experience so you and fobble of course scott fobble was at yep. portland as well did you overlap at all when yeah you we there? overlapped for a year yeah for so a year. i was a true freshman his fifth year um and that was a really fun time to join portland you know obviously the history was there and i was talking to them when they were you know seventh in the nation um i was still being recruited by uh rob connor and jesse johnson who was the assistant coach at the time and you know and that sparked obviously my interest i'm like wow this is the highest level program that's talking to me um and you know as soon as things kind of panned out i i come and i join the team and uh you know two months in they placed there in the nation first podium finish ever um and you know with fobble leading the way on that and that was really cool um i knew we had big shoes to fill obviously because they graduated almost everyone on that team <laughs> the year after but it was it was a blast i learned a lot from those guys yeah um and it gave me uh, just kind of a, a passion to like do it better than them. Sure. You know, the following years, which we ended up doing. So, yeah. Yeah. And so your highest finish while you were there was second? 
Uh, yes, team finish was second. Team, team finish, yeah. Yeah, 2017, we were second uh, across to the NAU boys. To the NAU so, boys. Yeah. And, and you individually, what was your uh, best performance? I was 26th there that 26. year. And then I was 40th the following year. Okay. Yeah, so just snuck in that last All-American spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the last one, yeah? Yeah, yeah last one, last great. spot. Um, so, so you mentioned, uh, yeah, so Matt Baxter was uh, yeah. Matt, now a teammate on NAU. He yeah. was also running there at the time yeah. uh, at NAU. And then Rory, who you've mentioned. Yeah. Would have been uh, at BYU. Were you the same year? Yes, we were the okay. same year, like all the way through. We're yeah. the same age. Um, we had the same eligibility all the way across the board. Yep. Um, and raced each other a lot. Yeah. So, ha <laughs> so. How, how did it go Which, against those guys? Yeah. Um, Baxter always kicked my ass. <laughs> like, always. Got no uh, race now. Yeah. He, he was always a stud. I was always kind of looking at him. It's just like, wow, what, well, you know, what's Baxter doing? How's he racing? Um, I was always, you know, in the mix and he would take off on me, you know, on those races. But slowly closed close gap over the years. Sure. And, and we mentioned it in some of our podcasts how he mentioned, he goes, um, when I was like first kind of getting to know him, yeah. I said, oh yeah, blah, 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 you know, this race. And he goes, I'll be honest, man. I didn't even know who you were. <laughs> it was just like, I was like, it's fine. I know like you're a big deal. So, and I feel um, like Matt could say that without offending you though. Oh, you know? absolutely. He's just a nice guy. He's, you know, he's, he's just from New Zealand. So he's just going to be brutally honest, <laughs> but not, you know, no offense taken. We're sure. good pals now. Yeah. So. That's great. But yeah, Roy and I knew of each other really well. Um, you know, it was, uh, I think at conference, our record is dead even. Okay. Um, he beat me twice. I beat him twice. Yep. Um, but I'd say from that record, I get, I get the wins because I beat him at conf one conference on his home turf. So oh, dang. You know, sorry, Rory. You know, I, I had to take the glory there, but <laughs> he's not going to like hearing that. No, I, he, but he's well being aware. Reminded. He's well aware. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, so it's been fun with those guys. Yeah. Good. And, and does it feel uh, in terms of the transition from Portland to NAZ, uh, we'll talk about, yeah, how that's been because it's been right. about six months. But yeah. how is it having some of those guys around that you raced against in college and um, not necessarily trained with, I guess, but knew of, does it feel kind of just like the next step? Um, it, do do yeah. things feel dramatically different or it's it's been like a nice transition, smooth? Yeah, you know, it's overall, I'd say it's been a smooth transition, um, especially like in terms of training with new guys. Uh you know, I think one of one of the nervous aspects that you might have or like, you know, not necessarily worries, but is are you going to fit in with the with the group around you? Sure. Um, and I found that these guys felt, you know, at this point that I feels like I've known them forever now. Yeah. Um, you know, we've gotten that close, like on these yep. on these runs. And I joined a little bit later just due to injury and everything. But at this point, it just it just feels natural having these guys around. Um, and the thing is, like they're really good as well. And so I think we're in this, um, point where like, and now that I'm more fit and everything, like I'm helping push some workouts and they're leading me in, in some of their strengths and that sort of thing. And it's just clicking. It's yeah. just, it feels right. Um, and I know I'm right where I should be. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll, uh, want to talk about your schedule cause some yeah. exciting stuff coming up. For um, sure. but, but in terms of, uh, like you mentioned, getting on the team kind of a little late because mm -hmm. of some injuries. So you, you joined back in July, you were mm -hmm. training in Portland, yep. um, and you ended up uh, with a stress fracture bef yep. before you got here? Yeah, yeah. You know, things were feeling weird. It was about a week out from me moving down here. Okay. Um, we took a little bit of downtime because we just knew my travel because I drove down from Portland um, would make training a little bit more difficult. Uh, so it was pretty much, it was a really light week. Things weren't terrible. Um, but as soon as I got here, we wanted to get an MRI, uh, and sure enough, stress fraction of my femur. In your um, femur? Yeah, yeah. Did you so, have one there before? No, and okay. I've never had a bone injury before. Oh, so, wow. So, you know, it left a lot of, like, questioning of, like, okay, what was I doing wrong? Um, and I don't think there was any, like, one specific thing I was doing wrong. I think there was, I had a lot on my plate. I was finish, finishing up a couple, like, a job, an internship, um, new training, and just, like, uprooting and <laughs> heading south. Was, right. Like, it was all a big deal, and I think... Uh, something's to be said about external stress uh, on the body. Yeah, you know, I just think something gave, and that was that. So, yeah. Um, obviously, it didn't make cut, you know the pro step uh, as easy as as it should be. Sure. Um, not that it should be something that's super easy, but uh, it it just that's just how it went for me. So, right. Yeah. So the the takeaway for for folks out there that deal with yeah. the same thing maybe don't don't alter too many variables at once. Or yeah, something. absolutely. You know, just be cognizant of like you know what. How much strain you're putting on your body, no matter right. if it's uh, if it's work or training or whatnot, it, yeah. it all stacks up. But 
And yeah. looking back, what might you have changed? Would, do you think you would have backed off a little more on the training, given those other um, things kind of were having to happen? I think the training was right where it should have been, okay. in all honesty. Yes, it was new training, but um, I think I was able to handle things very well. Yeah. Uh, I just would have taken one of those things out. Uh, obviously, I had to work, so maybe my internship needed to be dialed back sure, that I was sure. doing because obviously I wasn't getting paid for that. But I, was <laughs> right. on my, I was on my feet for like six hours. Oh, really? You know? So yeah. And what were you doing? Uh, I was in a I was in the weight room at Portland, okay. just uh, kind of shadowing, and yeah. um, it's something I want to get into later. Sure. Um, you know, just training other athletes and that sort of thing. So yeah. it was early mornings, a lot of my feet squeezing in runs when I could, and. Yeah, it's just yeah. how it went. Probably weren't sleeping as much either. Yeah, as exactly. Result. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you made it here, uh, but by the sound of it, uh, Coach Coach Ben was um, louting your, your rehab and, right. and how well you were doing with that. So you stayed yeah. on top of stuff as much as you could. Yeah, you, were, you, you know, we, we jumped right in the pool. Um and we hit like four workouts a week. It was it was in a the lot. Pool? Yeah, it so was a lot of swimming. It was swimming. Yeah, so no aqua, yeah, aqua yeah. jogging. No aqua jogging until like the very end. Okay. Right before I was about to hit the ground again. Um, so it was it was all arms. They didn't want me kicking because of the femur and everything oh. too. So I uh, put on a little mass. Um, yeah, <laughs> they were, the guys were giving me crap about that <laughs> a lot too. But um, all the Hoka shirts didn't fit for a little bit there. That's, <laughs> that sort of thing. That's hilarious. But no, it. it you know, obviously the transition from the pool to running isn't something that's seamless. Sure. But I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't be where I'm at now without that aerobic uh, base that I was able to put in. Right. At the very least. So. Do you have a history with swimming or was that new to you? You know, I've done a little bit of swimming in high school. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I had my fair share of injuries during Portland. Sure. So I felt comfortable enough in the pool to get yeah. the job done. Good. Um, so. That's just something that's there, I guess. How was swimming at 7,000 feet? It was very hard. <laughs> it was very, very hard. Um, the first few weeks, it was just like, uh, I'd go lactic, you yeah. know, <laughs> like with some of these harder sessions. Right. But within, you know, six weeks, I have I felt like I could hold my own as a runner in there. So, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was, uh, did you have any like big sessions towards the end that like kind of gave you confidence that you were fit enough once you got running that you weren't going to be too, you know, too yeah, far behind. Yeah, you know, we would, um, we would alter between some, like, tempo work yep. followed by, like, um, more interval, like, interval sure. sessions. Um, you know, so I had, like, a either 25 or 30 minute tempo where I went basically, like, a full mile yep. um, in that time and then, you know, double back the next day f with, like, you know, just some hard reps where I, I felt like I was just really strong and I was on top of it. I was flying through the water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I, I could just recover quick, you know? So right. it was it started to get really fun. And, and I can't say, like, I'd be super excited to jump back in the pool. Sure. But, uh, you know, it got the job done. Here we are now. We're running away. Yeah. So. so you got back to running uh, what month then? Back it was in, in October. In October, okay. Yeah. Do you remember your first running workout once you got back? I do. It yeah. was uh, 12 times a minute on, minute off okay. uh, with Fobbs and Baxter. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, yeah, we got this. Like, you know, obviously I was still a little nervous. And yeah. um, it's only a minute, you know. But the minute off catches up with you very quickly. <laughs> and there was a slight hill at around minute nine. And they dropped me like a sack of potatoes. I was just, I was off the back. I was heart rate spiked and it doesn't come back at altitude. <laughs> so I, uh, I was like... Oh my God! Did I do anything in the pool? You're right. <laughs> yeah. This and, is translating. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for about six weeks, dude, you know, I'd have days where I I get through it just fine, and uh, some other days I just hit a wall sure. and I keep hitting that wall. Yeah. Um, but you just kind of keep keep at it, yep. and the things it pans out at some point. So yeah, so yeah. It, it seems like it paid off. Um, you're gonna have to forgive me because I don't remember the name of the race that you just finished fifth at. Yeah, USA Cross Country Championship. Thank you, yep, USA Cross Country. Yep. Yeah. And so top six uh, qualified for the Pan Am yes. Games, mm -hmm. which was the goal. Yeah. Um. So you did that. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how did that? Uh, well, we, tell me a little bit about the race, but in, right. in terms of looking back now, like how how important was that, or how, how in making you feel like you know you'd really come back? Yeah. You know, we put that on the schedule. It's, when I was still in the pool, I was still swimming. Um, I had like two or three weeks left in the in the recovery period from the injury, and it just gave me a sense of purpose. I I, I couldn't wait to get back there, get back on the on the grass. That's where I had all my best performances. Um, I was never like the strongest track guy in college, and uh, and I'd raced there in 2016 for WCCs at the same course. So I knew that it was gonna be right in my wheelhouse. I was very confident going into it. 
Um, and it like even after not racing since 2018 fall, because I was I finished NCAA's um, 2018 and then was basically injured on and off right. throughout 2019. So this was my first race in a long time. But I just felt I felt at home. I felt alive. I felt just supremely confident in uh, in my abilities to race well. So fifth, um, you know, I chipped away at the race. Uh, each guy and found my spot and we're going to Pan Am's February 29th. That's so, great. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Same day as uh, the Olympic trials, so all <laughs> yeah. you guys will be, have big races. Yes, day. exactly. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see what, how it lines up uh, for race times, but uh, sure. I know they're going to be running hard. I'm going to be running hard for those guys. Yeah, so totally. It's, it's a big month. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. So you'll be there February 29th and then you've got some other, uh, some goals on the track. Yeah, um, exactly. Going so forward. A week later, I'll be in Jacksonville, Florida for US uh, 15K champs. Okay. Um, that'll be my first road race. Yep. And then um, about a month later, early April, is the Stanford Invite 10K. Um, okay. And that's where we're going to try to punch the uh, Olympic trial qualifier. So, yeah, and yeah. I was talking to Ben about um, what that'll take. So the yeah. 28 flats, the auto, but mm -hmm. it'll be softer than that um, yeah, in terms will. of getting in. What uh, What's your 10K PR? Currently, it's still 29.15 okay. from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so we're going for a big PR. Sure. <laughs> but uh, we don't, you know, in talking with Ben, it's just... We aren't too worried about the fact that that's my... Sure. Uh, I'm a different runner than I was when I ran that. Right. Um, we'll have been at altitude for a good chunk of time. Yep. Um, and we're hitting things pretty well as long... You know, it's just a matter of staying confident in the training. Yep. Um, making the right decisions in terms of recovery and just staying diligent in the weight room. Yep. And it's, it's going to come. I feel definitely confident in that. So, what do you yeah. think will be a good indicator for you, I suppose mentally as much as anything, mm -hmm. leading up to that uh, that 10K? Like, is there a certain workout that you think if you, if you hit certain times, like that'll you'll, you'll feel like you can do it? Or is it a whole body of work? Or what, what do you get strength from? Yeah, you know, I'd say it's more of a whole body of work. Yeah. Um, kind of like you said, like the ability to stack workouts at altitude is is the biggest thing, you know, because you'll have a day where you feel like a million bucks and it's like, oh, I'm going to smash 28 flat. But then two days later, if you can't recover from that, yeah. you know, that's, you gotta, you gotta be aware of that. Yep. And if you can stack, uh, workout to workout week to week and then month to month, that's, that's where it comes. Right. Um, and I, that was a, I was a firm believer in that at Portland and I'm a firm believer in that now. Right. Um, I'm not saying I could go cross 20 flat right now, but I know by April we'll be ready for that. Sure. So, yeah. And uh, the the race, the 15K, your yeah. first road race, mm -hmm. um, do you, is, is that sort of, uh, in some sense, trying to line you up for Stanford, or do you view, like, Pan Am's, uh, uh, the 15K, and then the 10K is sort of independent of each other? Or how are those working together for you? You know, I th on one end, it's very good for... Um, just getting in the in the habit of racing again just being competitive getting that uh, competitive fire and just like getting in and just racing guys hard um you know stanford obviously the goal is more of a time base yeah. but if you if we can still approach it with a competitive mindset it's going to make the, the task a lot easier sure um pan ams is fun because it's cross and i i know on an international scene by then i should be able to you know kind of show my own yep and then 15k will be a great obviously uh it'll just be good strength yep um out on the roads there with those guys you know so that i guess they each are a stepping stone on the way to this big goal of getting to the trials sure so which would be my first outdoor championship ever so right. <laughs> yeah it's uh it, it all stacks on itself and it's yep. all part of the part of the schedule the uh the 15k down in florida w folks i've spoken to about that race they talk about the humidity and the bridges right the, those are the two big yeah. things how do you feel about humidity and bridges um i say bring it on you know <laughs> harder elements the better cool um more, that's, more that's opportunities cross -country yeah, yeah exactly yeah. more opportunities for people to quit the better for me you yeah know? so um i know like pan ams is gonna be very hilly so we're um dialing into hills right now um so i'm not really afraid of bridges and that yeah. sort of thing <laughs> um and then you know humidity i haven't raced in it a ton but it's just a it's just something you gotta work with right so do you we'll think you'll do do any sauna work or, or anything you in know we did sauna work leading into usa's okay um i don't think we're gonna do that this time around um we'll do that more for the stanford Tech. sure yeah. sure makes but, sense yeah um so you officially turned pro back in july yep um what uh you obviously ended up here at nz elite yeah what we've been talking more short term when you look at kind of what you're trying to do in going pro are there any um 
overarching themes or like what are some mm -hmm. big things I guess you know you're, you're trying to do yeah you know that one's like I don't necessarily have like a, a big answer for that I, I know the roads are calling my name I know the marathon's gonna be a strong suit and you know for now like half marathon 10k is gonna be where I'm at I want to really ex like hit those pretty hard and, and see where that takes me um I want to still be working on getting to those cross big cross meets yep. we've got a fun opportunity because USA is back in San Diego next year and then world, it's a world cross year so I'd love to make that team um you know and just seeing where this goes yep. um you know obviously long term um kind of what I told Ben is you know I know by 2024 that's that's that'd be my goal is to make an olympic team there sure um and for all i know like 10k could be going really well but i know the marathon is probably calling my name right so obviously we've had a lot of success and i think the guys on the team and women of course at the end of the month will prove that yeah so yeah yeah how, how much does working with this group sort of i guess influence the yeah i don't know i suppose your own goals i mean for one thing i don't know which came first i'm assuming your beard but fobs yes. now has right. a beard i don't know if he shaved but last time no, I yeah saw he him, still has so. a beard yeah, yeah. Him and scott smith i'm living with them both right now okay um and i obviously my beard came first <laughs> it did uh so i don't want to say they're copying me but right. they see the the potentials of beard strength mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but no those guys like you know, these guys have just been at it for years at this point. Um, I think the time is now. And it, it just shows the diligence of the sport because it doesn't all come at once. Right. Um, you know, Steph Bruce has been at this forever. Kellen has been at this forever. Um, and that's just, it's just phenomenal to be around those those athletes. And um, I, w I can't say, like, I've, like, I can't, like, pick one thing and learn from all of them. But it is just this cohesive mindset and energy of just going and getting the job done. Sure. Day in and day out, no matter what the conditions are or what the workout is. Um, I just see them grinding so hard. and just, like, it's a, it's super exciting. They're yeah. crushing long workouts, a lot of mileage, and they're just they're just getting after it. And that's um, that's really inspiring for me. You sure. know, it's like, you can if they can do this, you can do this, too that sort of thing right. so i'm excited to be racing on the same day as them yeah you know i'd love to be there cheering, cheering them on but i know i'll be holding them in my mind for right. the 29th so well hopefully yeah. uh yeah hopefully the start times align so maybe yeah, no, you I, can both be watching each other totally races. yeah, yeah or following really fun. yeah absolutely uh hogs thanks hogs. for joining us I, I guess i'm on board with calling you that now too. all right yeah. sounds good man <laughs> we'll see you on the next one cool thanks, thanks.